And ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I have some really smart, good friends. So Lisa just told me to remind everybody to turn off your phones, okay? So uh, thank you, Lisa, for uh, keeping me straight. If you have phones, make sure they're in the off position. As I describe these ceremonies both, this is an unveiling ceremony, many of you have been, to the induction ceremony, which is always held down in Columbus, Georgia, always the first Saturday in November, Veterans Month. The way we describe that ceremony and this ceremony is emotional because your emotions are all over the place. It's the happiness of a wedding and the solemnity of a memorial service. So uh, I think you'll get the full impact of that as we go along. Lieutenant Governor Jones, Senator Harbison, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame unveiling ceremony for the 31 inductees from the classes of 2021 and 2022. Uh, also, as a pause here, uh, we normally have one class at a time, but because of COVID and other things, we're combining uh, these two classes. General Wright, right here. It's always good to make an entrance. Right, right, right on that second row right there. My name is Colonel Retired Rick White, and I have the humble privilege of being the director of this rare and noble Hall of Fame for our great state. Since the inception of the GMV HOF in 2013, a grand total of 162 Georgia veterans have been inducted, and today's ceremony marks the second time that an unveiling ceremony has been conducted in our beautiful state capitol. By the way, I didn't know until about two years ago, and Roger Wise informed me and in brief me, this is the official museum of the state of Georgia. Many of you, I lived here all my life, except while I was in the Army for 31 years. I didn't know this was the official museum. So when you have a chance today or whenever, uh, enjoy yourself, walk around and see this beautiful building as a museum. At this time, I mean, at, as the program progresses, more information will be provided about the Hall of Fame. And at this time, I will introduce Master Chief, J-R-O-T-C, Master Chief Petty Officer Jorge Chisneros. He is the commander of the troops for the ceremony today. Commander, please post the troops.
Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's in your program, but I want to uh, just spe spend special recognition to these three great JROTC programs. Uh, the King's Academy, Army JROTC, led by Colonel Rick Steppett, Senior Military Science Instructor, Naval JROTC from Alatoona High School, Ackworth, Georgia, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Knudsen, Senior Naval Science Instructor, Air Force JROTC from Lovejoy High School, Hampton, Georgia, with uh, retired Major, United States Air Force retired Major Colleen Murray, Senior Aerospace Science Instructor. If this doesn't make you feel good about the youth of America, and we hear so many negative things about the youth of America, this is the upside, this is the positive. For that, I'd like to give these young men and women a round of applause. You know, most of us grew up saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, please, thank you. These people, to the person, does that. I had a good chance this morning to talk to many of them. So polite, so not, so I, my hat's off, my salute to their instructors. Thank you so much. <laughs> At this time, as we always do since 2013, since the inception, there will be no Jer uh, Hall of Fame ceremony, our meeting, our gathering, without an opening prayer and a closing prayer. And along with that uh, thing we've established, I'd like to introduce, uh, uh, mm, lost my notes here, introduce Pastor uh, Mark Beatty. And Mark is the, let me find my notes here. He's the pastor of the Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Marietta. And I know Mark is also the chaplain of our Johns Creek Veterans Association. And uh, great man, great veteran, Air Force veteran, pastor. In thanksgiving and gratitude for this day, let us pray together. God of all creation, God of life, God of love, we thank you for the many blessings you shower upon us, for the breath of life this day, for the freedom to honor your name here in this place, for the freedom of being able to say openly and joyously, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For love and for life, you have sacrificed for us. You reign and lead by serving and giving. You stand in power and might for the powerless and the meek. You are life-giving. But we who strive to be your faithful followers stray to seek our own ways, our own narratives, our own control, our own power. Too often we don't love you like you love us nor do we love our neighbors as ourselves. But we are both saint and sinner. Though we stray, yet we were created good, and you yourself proclaimed it so in the word. Through the power of your word, of your grace, and through your spirit, some of us, your children, have been called to a unique godly service beyond the norm of civilian, secular, and culture. Some have been called to serve in selfless sacrifice, in leadership that is ultimately serving and giving, being willing to give of their very lives so that others might live abundantly. We remember some of the bravest, the most selfless, the most giving, the most faithful in serving of those you have called and their acts of courage and godliness through sacrifice and selflessness. May the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame serve to honor the godly selfless service of all those who have been called and named, that their faithful actions might be a witness and a legacy of what self-giving love truly is, 
And may the memory of their service be a lamp for this nation and a light unto your path as we give thanks to you for each of these precious service men and women. Together as one, in your life-giving name of freedom, we pray. Amen. Cadet Captain Jimmy Holton from the Lovejoy High School Air Force Gerald TC will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. may be seated. As you can see in our program agenda, our host for today's ceremony is State Senator Ed Harbison from Columbus. Senator Harbison is a United States Marine Corps veteran, a Vietnam War veteran, the recipient of the Purple Heart for wounds received in combat. Senator Harbison was inducted into the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame in the second class in 2014, and is the inductee sequence number is 27. Of all the true words that you will hear today, my statement that without the steadfast and passionate support of Senator Ed Harbison, the state of Georgia would not have a Hall of Fame for its veterans, and we all thank him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Harbison. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Colonel White, for the matchless job you and my good friend Long, Colonel Longgrid, do for veterans in the state of Georgia. Hello and good afternoon to you all. I'm so glad to be here today to honor the 2021 and the 2022 inductees to the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame. To reintroduce myself, I'm Senator Ed Harbison, and I am the Senator for the District 15 area of our state, and the 14th, as you heard, inductee into the Hall of Fame. It's my greatest honor since I've been serving in the Georgia State Senate. Thank you, Colonel White, director of this esteemed organization, along with my good friend Roger Wise, and all members of the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame for allowing me to have the privilege of hosting today's event. I am truly humbled to be here under the Gold Dome to commend and pay tribute to the courageous men and women of Georgia who served in the uniformed services of our great country, the United States of America. These men and women, brave as they are, have exemplified great valor, achievement, and service to our nation. And I'm overjoyed to welcome them to the growing list of heroes in the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame. I would like to take this time to welcome our speaker for the ceremony today, my good friend, Lieutenant Governor Bert Jones, and the Georgia Department of Veterans Service Commissioner, Patricia Ross. Let's give them a great round of applause. <laughs> it It is an honor to have such highly recognized public servants and leaders to be here today to say they appreciate what you do, what you are to Georgia, and what you represent. Once again, thank you so much for being here today as we honor our Georgia patriots. At this time, please welcome my great friend, Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones. Well, good afternoon. I hope that young lady is all right. We do have an, we have an infirmary here in the, in the Capitol, and, and hopefully we'll uh, get, get her assistance right there. And uh, I, I, I hate that. But thank you, young people, for being here today, and, and, uh, and I appreciate everything you're doing. I will, I will be uh, brief in comments, because um, uh, I know we do have the largest 
uh, inductee group, Hall of Fame inductee group in the, in the history of the Hall of Fame. Uh, and uh, so I want to congratulate each and every one of you. I want to thank my good friend, Senator Ed Harvison. He's uh, obviously a member of the Hall of Fame himself. He's a retired Colonel, Army veteran, and he is an uh, Army Marine, excuse me. Excuse me, I mean, excuse me, Marine. Uh, and uh, I apologize for that now, Ed. Good Lord. Give me a, I mean, you, you, you can flog me later on after that, but no, he's a retired Marine. And, uh, you know, it took, few, uh, and he's such a humble guy, it took us several years to be serving in the Senate before he started really kind of telling me about stories about him serving in Vietnam and, and uh, being a Purple Heart recipient. And, uh, and he's truly a great American and a war hero. And I appreciate his service, not just uh, to the United States military, but to the state of Georgia as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel uh, Mike Dugan here, who is uh, also serving in the state Senate, a good friend of mine and colleague and our uh, commissioner of insurance, uh, two-star general, uh, John King. Uh, uh, thank you, guys. Let's give those gentlemen a round of applause for their public service and everything. Else. We are so we are so fortunate to have uh, so many men and women in this room who are willing to serve and who have served. And we want, from the bottom of our hearts, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for your service to this country and to your service to the state of Georgia. I had a I had a five star general one time when I was a young man, just elected to the state senate. He was a, a general, Peter Bolin, and he was like most five-star generals. He told you exactly what he thought about things. And uh, he was the president at the time of Georgia Military College. And I never will forget, he told me, he said, you know, if it wasn't for the young men and women in this country who are willing to serve, uh, uh, the, a man can, in this country, a person can go their entire life and not know they're a coward. Uh, because of the service and the work that the people in this country do, uh, men and women in our military service do for this country. And it, and it you know, it, it was profound, a statement at the time, but as I've gotten older, it's really sunk in that we enjoy, the in this country, we uh, take for granted the luxuries that we have uh, and, and the freedoms that we have as individuals and citizens of this country. And it's all because of the, the men and women who are willing to serve in the United States military. And I just want to tell each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate your service. We want to congratulate you on this award, on being honored and recognized for your service. And we're so proud uh, to have uh, heading our, uh, the commissioner here today, uh, heading our, our um, veteran services up here in the state of Georgia. Uh, uh, retired Colonel Ross uh, here, is here today and she is, uh, she's doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, she is someone who retired from the military in 2014 and, uh, and she has uh, done, a, done an exceptional job and I know will continue to do a great job uh, as in that role as the Commissioner of Veteran Services uh, because we do have over 400,000 veterans uh, living here in the state, and and uh, and it is it is vital that we uh, cater to their needs. And she has the resources, and we're committed to making sure that we ha she has the resources to do that. And uh, and I'm so appreciative of Senator Harbison for all the hard work that he did to make this possible. And uh, and without without further delay, I introduce our commissioner, Commissioner Ross, here today. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Jones. Uh, having heard you speak uh, several times, I have the unenviable position of following you. So I am very honored and humbled to be here amongst such heroes. Um, and I do want to tell our young men and women on the stairs, having been in many formations myself uh, during my 25 years in the military, uh, don't lock your knees. That is the key to success. Okay, so today we join together to recognize those Georgian heroes who exemplify our core values, those of service, integrity, commitment, excellence, loyalty. And with less than 1% of our population joining the United States military, it's important that we take the time to recognize these men and women who selflessly gave of themselves, whether it be physically, in lands across the globe and in hostile environments, or whether it be spiritually and emotionally, 
because in war, all are wounded. And I can say to a person, we've faced our demons. While many would call it resilience, or the capacity to withstand and to recover quickly from our difficulties, for this group before us, they've not just recovered, but have come back stronger, overcoming some of the most difficult obstacles humanly imagined. I want to thank not only the individuals recognized today, but the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame, who recognizes about 15 veterans a year of our almost 700,000 veterans here in the state of Georgia. They recognize those that have exemplified what's best in all of us. And while no one joins the military for selfish gain or glory, instead, we join because we believe in a cause that is greater than ourselves. And I dare say the individuals we're recognizing today are infinitely humble and probably uncomfortable with this recognition. But not only do we owe this recognition to these heroes, we owe it to these junior ROTC students here today and the hundreds and thousands of school children who will tour this Capitol and see these photos so that they know that we, the state of Georgia, values our military and our veterans. George Washington said, the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. Today, we appreciate these heroes who rushed into the heat of battle, made institutional changes, or committed to a life of service after their military time. And today, we tangibly show the value we place on the service of our military. And we make every effort to ensure that they are recognized for doing what so few in our nation have dared to do, that is don the military uniform and answer the call to go wherever the president and our nation says is in our national security best interest. In the words of Bernard Malamud, without heroes, we are plain people and we don't know how far we can go. These heroes here today show us all what's possible, how strength, comes from adversity, and how selfless service can have a ripple effect that impacts countless others. So on behalf of Georgia's Department of Veterans Service, I want to thank you. Let me say that again. I want to thank you. My sincerest thank you for all that you have done for our nation and for the state of Georgia. And with that, I will turn it back over to Colonel Rick White. The commissioner reminded me of something when she talked about raising your right hand. Um, many of you have heard me say this before that you've gone through listening to me, but I never passed the opportunity to talk about what the Bible says about veterans and military service members. One verse is found in the Old Testament and one verse is found in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, in Isaiah 6, 8, there's two questions and one answer. And every time a man or woman stands before that officer that in, of enlistment or commissioning, they are, in fact, in essence, quoting Isaiah 6, 8. Two questions are, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And the immediate quick answer is, here am I, send me. Every time a young man or woman raises that right hand and takes that sacred, life-changing oath to join our United States military, military, they are in fact saying, here am I, send me. And once they've taken that oath, they fall into the next verse, John 15, 13, which I'm sure most of you are very familiar with, and it tells what that serviceman or woman is willing to do. Greater love hath no one than this, than to lay down their lives for a friend. And those friends are you and me and people they know, people they don't know, people around this world that have asked for the freedoms that we enjoy and so many times take for granted in our country. That's what young men and women do in our military. 
If you see a soldier, to quote Roger Wise, walk up and say, thank you for your service. If you see someone that's a first responder, thank you for our safety. As each inductee's name is read, if able, if able, the inductee or a representative of the inductee will stand or raise their hand as their JROTC cadet will present the beautifully framed photograph and citation of that inductee. Please hold your applause until all 31 inductees have been in announced. The inductee citations that you see in the frames will not be read during this presentation, but rather only their name and the categories for which they have been nominated will be announced. In your program is a shorter version of the inductee citations. For the 10 posthumous inductees and those inductees that are unable to be with us today, a family member, a friend, or another veteran will stand in their place. A bell will be rung for the three killed in action inductees and the seven deceased inductees. This is the first time that this new Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame bell will have been used in a ceremony. This bell is inscribed and dedicated to all that have given their lives for freedom and also our POWs and MIAs. The base that this bell rests on is in memory of the late, quote, submarine Mike Kotler. Many years ago, submarine Mike started the tradition of ringing a Navy bell for those of our deceased inductees. Unfortunately, Mike passed away just shortly, a few weeks ago. His son, Alexander Kotler, is with us here today from New York City. And as we dedicate this bell and demonstrate what the bell sounds like, Alex will stand beside the bell as United States Army First Sergeant Retired Marshall Huckabee, inductee number 89, will now ring the bell as it is now being dedicated. That will be what you will hear when we announce a deceased or killed in action veteran. Now we'll present the inductees of the classes of 2021 and 2022 along with their framed photographs and citation. I'm gonna go slightly out of order uh, due to, uh, to, to honor and uh, help another veteran who needs to make it to the airport. <laughs> Inductee number 153, Logan Thomas Gray Service. Inductee number 132, Sparkle K. Adams Service. Inductee number 133, Orman Craig Fowler, Jr., Valor. O.C.'s wife passed away this morning. Commander Fowler cannot be with us today, obviously. Standing in on his behalf is his friend and fellow Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame inductee number 160, Bob Ramanelli. Inductee number 134, James McClellan Grimshaw Valor. Inductee number 135, Thomas, excuse me, Michael Thomas Hall Achievement. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Hall, they live in Tennessee, uh, said he would be here. I hope uh, their safety is, is, he's not here, and I just hope they were safe. Inductee number 136, Samuel David Hernandez Valor. Command Sergeant Major Hernandez cannot be with us today. Standing in on his behalf is fellow Green Beret, Chief Warrant Officer for Ken Griffith. Inductee number 137, Dallas Scott Hudgens, service posthumous. Standing in on Sergeant Hudgens' behalf is his grandson, Cole Hudgens. Inductee number 138, George Marvin Johnson, Valor, posthumous. Standing in on Major General Johnson's behalf is his daughter, Jean Johnson Marion. Inductee number 139, Alfred J. Langreth, Valor, 
posthumous. Standing in on Captain Langer's behalf is his son-in-law, Guy Condra. Inducting number 140, John Patrick Newport Service. Inducting number 141, Thaddeus Raymond Sobinski, Valor Posthumous. Standing in for Colonel Sobinski is Army veteran and Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, badge number 58, and my good friend Larry Cooper. Inductee number 142, James Michael Sprayberry, Medal of Honor. Lieutenant Colonel Sprayberry cannot be with us today. Standing in on his behalf is the son of the nominator, Andrew Kotler. In his capacity, Andrew is standing in honor of both the Medal of Honor recipient and his father, who we just talked about, the late submarine Mike Kotler. Inductee number 13, excuse me, 143, Marion Edward Squire, Valor Posthumous. Standing in on Lieutenant Colonel Squire's behalf is his daughter, Sally Squires Bevel. Inductee number 144, Clark Jackson Thomas Valor Posthumous. Standing in on Lieutenant Colonel Jackson's behalf is his nominator, Dan Basenko. Inductee number 145, John William Thompson Achievement. Inductee number 146, Robert Aquin Thomas Valor, killed in action. Standing in on Captain Thompson's behalf is his son, John William Thomas, inductee number 145. Inductee number 147, Larry Dean Wright Valor. Inductee number 148, Dulles David Bain Valor. Private Bain, now 102 years old, cannot be with us today. Standing in on his behalf is his fellow Army medic and inductee number 115, Roger, Sergeant Roger Wise. Inductee number 149, Karen Fuller Brannan, Achievement. Colonel Brannan cannot be with us today. Standing in on her behalf is fellow Marine Officer Captain Mary Sanders. Inductee number 150, Armand Chapeau, Service. Inductee number 151, Sarita Y. Dyer, Achievement. Inductee number 152, Alvin Wilson Floyd Valor, Killed in Action. Standing in, on Sergeant First Class Floyd's behalf is his daughter, Teresa Floyd Haynes. Inductee number 154, Thomas Harder Greer Valor Posthumous. Standing in Major Greer's behalf is his widow, Deidre Greer, and his two daughters. Inductee. In, inductee number 155, Michael Edward Grisham, Valor. Inductee number 156, Claude Milton Kicklighter, Achievement. Inductee number 157, Travis B. Lee Jr., Valor, Killed in Action. Standing in on First Lieutenant Lee's behalf is his nominator, Ed Woods. Soldiers don't cry, but occasionally they get sweaty eyeballs. Mm. Inductee number 158, Grant 
Andrew McGarry Valor. Rangers lead the way. Inducting number 159, Frank Seidel Reese Valor. Inducting number 160, Robert James Romanelli Valor. Inducting number 161, Walter K. Schmidt Valor. Colonel Schmidt called me this morning. He cannot be with us today. Standing in on his behalf is United States Air Force veteran Michael Volosov. Inducting number 162, Billy Fowler Wade Valor. Sergeant Wade cannot be with us today. Standing in on his behalf is his sister, Judy Wade Stevenson. Let us all now welcome these latest inductees of the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame. Others that are with us today are previous inductees of the Hall of Fame, some of which I know that are here, some of which have come in since the ceremony began. All other, in, first of all, all in, the inductees that were previously inducted past years, would you please stand or raise your hand? Some of the many individuals and groups that have made significant contribution to today's ceremony uh, possible need to be recognized. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing and let us hold our applause until all have been recognized. Ms. Lakeithia Tolan, whose team at Georgia Correctional Industries makes possible the handsomely framed photographs and citations that, we, that are presented today. Thank you, Lakeithia. You're a good friend. Retired Army Command Sergeant Major Kerry Dreyer of the Georgia Department of Veterans Service is our go-to person when it comes to the supervision and handling of the inductees framed photographs and citations in the Floyd Veterans Building. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Georgia Military Veteran Hall of Fame inductee number 115 is former Army Sergeant Roger Wise. He is our ambassador to the state government and he, along with Senator Ed Harbison, just make things happen when it comes to this Hall of Fame. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> the photographer today is Kent Ruby. Uh, Kent, at his own volunteer, called me up. Do you need a photographer? Yes, I do, Kent. And he's also taking videos, so afterwards people can have photographs with uh, the cadets, groups, whatever, and we'll post that on our website and our Facebook. My sincere thanks to all go out to the members of the Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Association and the Johns Creek Veterans Association for assisting with seating and passenger drop-off. Thank you, my fellow veterans. Raise your hand, you guys that helped us out. Thank you. My thanks to the Georgia Building Authority and specifically Ms. Brooke Hamill for her team for today's support here in the South Atrium. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. If I have failed to thank anyone else, please forgive me. And if I did, I owe you 50 push-ups. <laughs> As I said earlier, we always open and cl close with prayer. At this time, inductee number 132, Sparkle K. Adams, will now lead us in the closing prayer. All hearts and minds clear. Dear Lord, we most humbly thank you for this auspicious opportunity to honor the inductees and the families that gave so much to support their loved ones' endeavors. Lord, as our friend Winston Menzies reminds us that we must never forget or fail to appreciate the investments and the sacrifices of those who gave 
and who have gone before us to create and secure our form of government and the God who has given it to us and allowed us to live here. We ask, Lord, to make patriotism a part of our character. Lord, we can all improve by acquiring positive character traits that will bless our entire lives as well as our performance for you. We pray for the gold star mothers and fathers who have returned their loved ones to you in the sacrifice of their service. Lord, we thank the state of Georgia, the leaders of this state, our veterans, the families, the youth that are doing such a wonderful job and are going to carry the torch for the rest of us. And last but not least, Lord, the men and women of the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame and our fearless leader, Rick White, who gives so much to the life of the organizations. We also pray that you put a hedge of protection around Tommy Clack for healing and comfort. As we leave from this place, but not from your presence, Lord, lead and guide us with the blessings of patriotism, compassion, respect, and love. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this completes the ceremony, but please remain seated. And like I say, after the cadets, you'll see them come off the stage. You can feel free to get photographs with them. With that, Captain Holden, please dismiss the ceremonial detail. Once each cadet is off the stage, please feel free to stand. One more time for these great cadets. Have a great afternoon and a safe travel home. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you.